Hallo, meine Lieben und herzlich willkommen zurück zu Life is Strange Before the Storm. So, wir erkunden nun die Schule weiter. Meh, well, at least not for now. How could I possibly make it through a day in this place without a little chemical assistance? Maybe this play won't suck. Maybe. Oh, wen haben wir denn da? Skip. Steph. Bin, auf, bin bei den Picknickstischen mit Mikey. Danke, auf dem Weg. Wir haben einen neuen Charakter. Mikey und Steph. Ich kann mich nie entscheiden, ob Steph die coolste oder die nerdig nerdigste Person von ganz Blackball ist. Vielleicht beides? Sie ist auf jeden Fall die Königin der Stubenhocker mit all ihrem kuriosen Rollenspiel und Science-Fiction-Kram. Ich glaube, ihr Vater ist ein Videoeditor. Sie verdient Kohle mit dem Verkauf gebrannter DVDs. Verbrechen zahlt sich aus. Ich bin mir ziemlich sicher, dass Steph sich um den ganzen technischen Backstage-Kram für die Theatervorführungen der Schule kümmert. Was ja passt. Noch etwas über Steph. Sie steht auf Mädchen und es ist ihr scheißegal, was andere darüber denken. Richtig so. Richtig so. Mikey Knorr ist der Vorsitzende von Stephs Fanclub und die zwei finden man gewöhnlich mit zusammengesteckten Köpfen an einem der Tische mit 20-seitigen Würfeln. 20-seitigen Würfeln. Dungeons and Dragons? Ähm, wann immer sie die Gelegenheit haben. Wenn das Leben wie, eine der äh, wie einer der Filme aus den 80ern wäre, die Papa immer geguckt hat, dann wäre Mikey der Nerd, dem die Sportler Hosenreißer verpassen. In der echten Welt steckt jeder, der Mikey angreift, tief in der Scheiße. Mikeys älterer Bruder ist Drew, Drew Nerf. Nord. Ich habe keine Ahnung, wie man es ausspricht, Leute. Der Alpha-Sportler von Blackwell. Die Wahrheit ist, dass Mikey einer der wenigen wirklich netten Menschen hier ist, obwohl er manchmal etwas sagt, mit dem er einen düsteren Au Ausblick aufs Leben preisgibt. Keine Ahnung, wo das herkommt. Vielleicht Star Trek? Elliot, ja, da freue ich mich ja rüber, was über den zu lesen. Was Blackwall-Schüler angeht, ist Elliot Hampton nicht so übel. Er hängt manchmal mit einigen der Idioten rum, aber ich habe den Eindruck, dass er eher ein einsamer Wolf ist, wie ich. Ähm, ähnlich wie, ähm, wie bei meinem Stundenplan haben Elliot und ich gemeinsam ge und ich gemeinsame Geschichte. Eine gemeinsame Geschichte, ich glaube, da fehlt ein... Eine, ja. Aber kein Theater und die Chemie stimmt nicht. Was? Ich verstehe den Satz nicht. Ähnlich wie bei meinem Stundenplan haben Elliot und ich gemeinsame Geschichte. Aber kein Theater und die Chemie stimmt nicht. Wir haben ein paar Mal rumgemacht, kurz nachdem Papa gestorben ist, aber da war nicht viel dran. Ich glaube, ich war bloß gelangweilt oder ein wenig einsam. Seltsam, ich weiß. Mhm. Die beiden haben also äh, schon rumgeknutscht und anscheinend hat Chloe kein Interesse, aber er wohl doch noch. Ich verstehe Elliot manchmal nicht. Er fragt mich ständig, ob wir was unternehmen, was nett ist. Aber ich bin mir nicht sicher, dass wir noch viel gemeinsam haben. Wenn er mit mir spricht, kommt es mir gelegentlich so vor, als studiere er mich. Ich weiß nicht, ob er nur befreundet sein oder mir an die Wäsche will. Ich schätze beides ist ein Kompliment. Es interessiert mich nur nicht sonderlich. Sorry, Elliot. Autsch. Okay. 7.5.2010. Max, du weißt ja, wie es mir so vorkam, als könnten die Dinge zwischen Mama und mir nicht schlimmer werden. Ha, die traurige Wahrheit ist, auf einmal muss ich mitentscheiden, ob ich nett oder ehrlich zu ihr sein soll, denn beides geht nicht. Aber wie soll ich ehrlich sein, was den Schnurrbart angeht, ohne dass sie mich deswegen angreift? Und warum bin ich die Einzige, die sich wegen der feindlichen Übernahme unseres Hauses sorgt? Heute ein Werkzeugkasten und Schmorbraten morgen? Ich sollte hier aufhören, meiner geistigen Gesundheit zuliebe. Es scheint, als müsse ich alles heimlich tun, selbst wenn ich versuche zu helfen und Geld in Mamas Handtasche stecke, wie heute Morgen. Außerdem weiß Mama, dass ich schwänze, was scheiße ist, aber auf gewisse Art fühle ich mich besser. Bedeutet das, dass ich ein schlechter Mensch bin? Dass es mich nicht kümmert, dass ich schwänze und dass ich nur erleichtert bin, nicht mehr lügen zu müssen? Antworte besser nicht darauf. Chloe, der nutzlose, schlechte Mensch. Dann haben wir der 7.5.2010, Max. Der Schnurrbart hat mich heute zur Schule gefahren. Ja, so läuft mein Leben. Noch schlimmer. Er dachte, diese Fahrt wäre eine Gelegenheit, mir zu sagen, wie die Dinge von jetzt an laufen. 
Ich habe versucht, den Scheiß schnell zu beenden, aber ich habe das Gefühl, er wird sich deswegen bei Mama ausholen, weil er so eine Heulsuse ist. Hab wieder von Papa geträumt, der Traum, in dem ich dort war, als es passierte. Es wird jedes Mal schwerer, mich zu erinnern, was echt ist und was nicht. Nach dem Aufwachen weiß ich nur, wie sehr ich ihn vermisse. Ich hoffe, das hört nie auf. Die Chloe, die nicht dort war. Oder doch? Skip Matthews, Blackwell's finest. He's not so bad for a mall cop. Hey, Skip. Stopped any gang wars lately? Not today. Oof. Looks like you did, though. Huh? Ah, right. Whatever. I did ask Justin Williams' mom to move her Mercedes out of handicap parking. That ass. Yeah, you know how I roll. Mm. So, you spending a lot of quality time with Justin's mom? <laughs> no. But if you see Justin, tell him I can only ignore that cloud of weed smoke for so long. Tell him yourself, Skip. Not my problem. I'm trying to do him a favor. I thought you high risks all stuck together. High risks? Oh, shit. Sorry. Forget I called you that. Huh. High risks. Guess you can learn useful things in school. So, I went to the mill last night. Cut Firewalk live. You went to the mill? Wait. You saw Firewalk? It was cool. Whoa, pretty wicked. I didn't know you were into music like that. You can't judge a girl by the elitist fascist school her mother makes her go to, you know? <laughs> I get that. I'm in a band, actually. No shit. Really? We're called Pisshead. It's not a big deal or anything. I mean, I mean I'm trying to get our demo out there, but... It's hard. His head, huh? Would you maybe want to hear it? Our demo, I, I mean. Yeah, okay. Great. Ach, der hat die sogar dabei. Ist das denn meine Art von Musik? Ja, oh, ist meine Richtung von Musik. Mhm, definitiv. Das ist gut. So, what did you think? That was really good, man. If Pisshead came on the radio, I'd turn that shit up. Oh, right on. Awesome, Chloe, thanks. Na, no, das war echt nicht schlecht. Miss Grant, the least lame teacher at Blackwell. Wish she could get over the whole push me to succeed thing, though. Morning, Miss Grant. Chloe, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> What do you think of this hypothesis? that you'll be in your seat by the time chemistry class begins today. Science is all about discovery, Miss Grant. Guess you'll have to wait and see. With all the change that's happening at Blackwell of late, I suppose I can appreciate your consistent wit, Chloe. What kind of change do you mean? Well... The Prescotts have made an extremely generous donation to the school, which is good, But instead of going to support more science and mathematics, it's all being dedicated to the arts. You don't think more money should be spent in the arts? It's not that exactly. I recently made the case that STEM programs should receive more support, but apparently our new donors disagree with me. Such is life, I suppose. 
Miss Grant actually seems sad. Look at it this way, Miss Grant. More art classes will keep all the smug, self-absorbed types out of your science classroom. Articulate, as always. Ja, so bin ich eben. Ach ja, die Prescotts, die Prescotts. But fire's so pretty. But fire's so pretty. I prefer to wake and bake. But hey, to each their own. Mm -mm -mm. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Orders. Mawa? Oh, something's definitely missing from that totally blank wall. Was schreiben wir denn hin? Hoffentlich sieht uns keiner dabei. Last night's show was too epic. Cool. Ecke. Oh, wir können eine rauchen. Students at Blackwell have this herd instinct to glom up into little groups like sheep. And if you just want to be alone, you get labeled like some dangerous outsider. Just like any other prison. Except now the prison follows you wherever you go, thanks to social media. I can't believe Rachel posted a photo of the two of us together last night. Am I still an outsider if I'm hanging out with Rachel Amber now? And what does it mean that hanging out was so awesome? Does that make me just the same as every other student here? Nah, fuck that. So, kippe aus. Genug geraucht, weiter geht's. Die Ironie, ne? Hier zu rauchen ist so geil. Tampons. <lacht> ja, ich weiß, wir dürfen da nicht drauf. Aber das Schild ist so klein und wir können uns da sogar auf eine Kiste setzen. I should probably be getting to class, but I just don't care. Last night really happened? The internet says it did, but I still can't believe it. Rachel Amber. The drama star, honor student, popular princess of Blackwell. Swoops in like a Batman to save my ass and thrash to firewalk? Either that was a dream or real life just got a shit ton crazier. Oh nein. Scheiße. Principal Wells. Hey. Chloe Price. Is that a black eye? I'm uh Yep. I hope you know that Blackwell provides confidential counseling services for all our students. We are a safe space for any issue. I'm good. It's the other guy who needed a safe space from me. You never fail to conform to your reputation, do you? Miss Price, the sign clearly says do not walk on the stage. Such disregard for your fellow students' efforts won't alleviate your record of major infractions.
How many minor infractions and a major one? This is no joke, Miss Price. Who's joking? You've seen my math grades. <laughs> Perhaps you will find me less amusing if I mention the various allegations I've been hearing about your drug use. You know Blackwell has a zero-tolerance policy. Do I have to initiate a search of your person in order to establish the veracity of these allegations, Miss Price? That's what I thought. I'll look forward to seeing you in my office after school today. How does that sound? Um, eigentlich nein. Wells really has it out for me. I have to convince him it's in his best interest to back off. Actually, sir, I'm gonna go with no. Ah, so you're going to mouth off to me now, yes? And here I thought your well of witticisms had finally run dry. Sir, my well of witticisms runs so deep that you would get trapped at the bottom and never make it out alive. <laughs> Jokes? In my experience, that's how the guilty cover up their infractions. How did you become principal without learning the Constitution? The Fourth Amendment? Illegal search and seizure? We are a private institution, and policy allows me to search all students on the premises. Is it also policy to label certain students high risk and then single them out for special intimidation tactics? How do you know about that designation? Perhaps the better question you should be asking yourself is, what else do I know? I'm sure we, uh, do not need to make so public an issue of your behavior today. But make no mistake, Miss Price, this is not over. Ooh, goody. I love cliffhangers. <laughs> ich nicht. Funny, just a couple years ago, something like that would have scared the crap out of me. These days, I'm at, like, the collegiate level of not giving any fucks. Okay, das war, das war richtig gut. Blumen. Flowers always make me think of springtime, which makes me think of summer, which makes me think of getting the fuck away from Blackwell for three whole months. I love flowers. This makes being high sound like a bad thing. Heaven's work is actually pretty good. I'd never tell him that, of course. I would sacrifice a goat to Jeremiah Blackwell himself if it meant I'd be leaving here in a month. <laughs> the future needs excellence. The future is an asshole. Oh, Victoria. Uh, Victoria Chase. I'd rather vomit razor blades than talk to her. Ah, oh, Carrie Price! It's Chloe. Oh, right. I'm just teasing. People have been taking me so seriously since I won the Beacon's Young Artist Award for my photography. You don't say. Between that and the Vortex Club, it's hard to keep people from putting me up on a pedestal or whatever. But you know all about that. What, with Rachel Amber? Am I right? You hang with the Vortex Club? I mean, I'm technically not a member, but I am being courted. I'm not sure The club I... should be a collection of Blackwell elites, but instead, it's some anti-bullying, hand-holding kumbaya shit. Not when I'm a senior. Wow, the Young Artist Award. Oh, it's not a big deal or anything. Like, a hundred people submitted work, and my photography won. Congrats, I guess. So the beacon's putting me up on the front page of the lifestyle section. Who cares? Wait, what about Rachel Amber? Rachel posted a slamming selfie of you two having the time of your lives. Do tell. It was a pretty normal night for us. A little music, a little dancing. We murdered a guy. 
<laughs> you are so funny. Uh, seriously, though, I didn't realize you and Rachel were such BFFs. We're really not. Uh, so, what's she into? You know, what's her thing? Is it drugs? I'm not judging or anything. I figure if she's hanging out with you, she must be into some effed up shit. <laughs> you know? Seriously, I don't know why you're talking to me about Rachel. Oh, everybody loves her. Little Miss Perfect. So you're jealous of Rachel Amber. That's what's happening right now. Gotcha. Oh, God, I don't have time for this. I didn't even finish the chemistry assignment, and you're... being you. Oh. I'm sorry, Victoria. I didn't mean to be rude. You know, I finished the assignment. Want some help? You? Help me? Of course. That last problem was hard, right? If I'm remembering correctly, the answer was fluorine, uranium, carbon, potassium, and uh, uranium again. Does that sound right? Perfect. Hey, thanks, Carrie. No problem. Blöde Kuh. Boah, wackelt die mit dem Arsch. Ist das ekelhaft. Justin. Need my DVD from Steph. I bet she's nerding it up with Mikey somewhere. I can tell Justin's wearing his eau de gange. Damn, girl. That eye looks sick. What's going on? Last night, I scoped out this crazy party at the old mill up north. Kind of a DIY thing. Wow, no shit. I thought that place was like meth central. My cousin met this hooker there. Whatever. And... It was cool, okay? You wouldn't understand. Hey, out of the blue question, what do you think of Rachel Amber? She is amazing. Uh, if you're into chicks that are hot, smart, and hot. <laughs> I mean, she helped me out a while back. I was failing algebra hard. I believe you. Check it. After I bombed my midterm last fall, she tutored me for the rest of the semester. And then I crushed it. C plus. Huh. Dude, you need to freshen like a mofo. Are you saying I smell like weed? That's exactly what I'm saying. Word. Well, good looking out, Price. Wanna hit? Like, right here? More, am I to steal? Thanks. <lacht> Aber diese Rachel, die ist ja echt ne, die ist hübsch, die ist klug, die ist beliebt, die ist nett. Eigentlich ist das die perfekte Frau, ja? Evan. Ah, Evan. Amazing photographer, but such a bleeding heart. What soapbox is he on today? Chloe, I'd like to talk to you about wildfire awareness and prevention. Good morning to you too, Evan. According to the Department of Forestry, over 90% of this season's fires were caused by humans. That's a record high and completely preventable. This is for college, right? I don't believe you actually care about this. My interest in fire prevention is completely sincere. Besides, I intend to get into college on the strength of my photography alone. Do you think Rachel Amber would be willing to pose for my portfolio? She's so artistic. I bet she would be a dream model. What do you think? I guess. Who says we should prevent fire? Fire is awesome. While I realize you're being purposefully obstructive, you raise a good point. Many parts of our local ecosystem benefit from fire. Knobcone pine cones, for example, which require temperatures above 350 degrees to open. Say knobcone again. No. <laughs> I gotta run. Wait, one last thing. Will you sign my petition to have a fire safety assembly at school? Sure. I love assemblies. Some of the best naps of my life. Wow, thanks. I did not see that coming. You being, you know... Interested in complicated issues, helping out with the public. 
Do you want me to change my mind? I... No. How seriously am I taking this right now? There you go. Just don't expect this to become a habit. Blackwell Academy, home of tomorrow's leaders. Es wäre nur unfair, wenn man jetzt einen falschen Namen angegeben hätte. Ach, guck mal, Direktor Dödel und Mac enorme Eier. Oh. What? Caring about important issues? Caring in general. Na, no, jetzt haben wir das. Depp und Mikey. Aber da hinten sitzt noch jemand. Samantha, kenne ich nicht. Samantha Myers, School Wallflower. She could give you a run for your money, Max. Hey, Chloe. Oh, hey, süß. Samantha. Ist die süß. What are you reading? Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? I read that last year in Mrs. Hoyda's English class. I didn't think you did homework. <laughs> Normally I don't, but the play was actually good. What did you like about it? Uh, the story is about how relationships only work if people are willing to lie to each other. I'm not sure if you're joking. Sorry, I'm a little slow sometimes. I'm a little bitchy sometimes, so it's cool. People always say that. But I think you're actually... Sorry, Chloe. No one says anything like that. I don't know what I'm actually talking about. I bet. Die ist ja echt süß. Hm. Steph Gingrich und Mikey North, Blackwells Premier Indoor Kids. Steph has created something of a business selling pirated DVDs to other students. Das sieht echt, das ist echt, das sieht echt aus wie Dungeons and Dragons. Hm. If I had known the Celestial Avenger was bloodied, I would have totally given him my potion. It was a skill challenge. Potion wouldn't have worked. Skill challenge? It's part of the tabletop game we play. He wouldn't understand. Give me a break, nerds. I've heard of tabletop games. Cool. Got my DVD. One Blade Runner. Director's cut coming right up. Sweet. Five bucks, right? Keep it. I'm just glad someone here appreciates the classics. You even asked for the director's cut, which took out the shitty voiceover and replaced it with a sweet dream sequence. Dream life over real life. That's my motto. Right on. Hey, do you know if Rachel's a gamer? Rachel Amber? You're asking me? Didn't you two go out last night, or was it just like a friend thing? Why do you want to know? <laughs> Steph has a crush. <laughs> Chloe, you should join her game. Yeah, I don't have 50 hours right now. Thanks, though. We're at the end of the campaign, so it'll only take, like, 20 minutes? What else have you got to do before class? Ah, come. What the hell? Game on, nerds. Here's a character sheet. You are an elf barbarian. <laughs> Warum das lustig ist, ja, ähm, Elfen und Bamba Barbaren passt eigentlich nicht. Are you insulting me in some obscure nerd way? Think about it. An elf? Like skinny and kind of weird, but also a barbarian, so like really angry. In other words, Chloe Price. Wow, you two are a riot. All right, let's get started. You are both famous heroes in the kingdom of Avernon, a once peaceful land now laid to waste by the bloodthirsty raiders of the Black Well. Alone, you have fought your way through the raider camps, seeking their warlord leader, Durgaron, the Unscarred. As you enter the final camp, 
bloodied and weary. You see your fellow hero approaching from the opposite direction. I raise my staff to you in greeting. I am Elamon, wizard of the Third Circle, foremost advisor to King Tiberius, and sworn defender of Averno. Introduce your character. Y yeah, okay. Uh, I'm an elf barbarian named uh, Calamastia. Super into it. Not bad. The two heroes... Hold on. Elamon narrows his eyes at the elf in front of him and says, I am here to defeat Durgaron, the Unscarred. In the name of King Tiberius, what makes you think you are worthy to fight alongside me? I once stabbed a guy in the chest with a sword, and it went all the way through and killed the guy behind him, too. True story. You stand at a three-way crossing. To your left, the raiders' training ground. To your right, their prison camp. Straight ahead, an enormous, ostentatious tent that could only belong to Durgeron, the Unscarred. Which way do you go? Straight ahead, right? We're supposed to kill the Dur dude. Elamon frowns. The raiders could have some good loot at the training ground, and surely it is our duty to free all those prisoners. Your choice, newbie. Where do you wish to go? Also, erstmal befreien wir die Gefangenen. Guess it's time to free some peeps. Let's go to the prison camp. You behold a field of standing iron cages, each imprisoning a human villager, calling out for you to free them. Only a small, elderly dragonkin is keeping watch. He notices you, and in terror, runs into one of the few empty cages and locks himself in. Ah, poor little guy. What's a dragonkin? Dragonkin are like little dragon people. They're assholes. I bet he has all the keys. Oh, okay. Hey, shitface! Get out of there! The dragonkin hops up and down, shaking his ring of keys at you. He shouts in a strange language. Whatever he's saying probably isn't flattering. Got any useful spells in that robe of yours? Nothing that wouldn't blow up the cage and everything in it. Um, einschüchtern. Intimidate. That's a skill I have. Can I do that? I want the little bastard to shit his pants. You can try. What do you say? Listen up, you little lizard. Unfortunately, he doesn't speak common, which means he I can't- I cast communication on the dragonkin. Shit. Really? Now he can understand every word you say. Time to work some real magic. So this is called a skill challenge, where you try to use- Oh, I know what this is. I grab the bars of the cage and lean in, nice and close. He steps back, his scaly skin quivering in fear. What do you say? You know what I love? Making shoes out of dragonkin. I point at my shoes. I'm wearing a pair, now. Air dragonkins. There's something special about your scaly skin, how it's waterproof but also breathes. So comfy. Uh, he doesn't seem to like that idea. Neither do I. The dragonkin pleads with you. Please don't harm me, tall one. But I cannot give you key. Durgeron, much taller and meaner than you. You're short, I say. But you can always get shorter. Give me the key, or I'll chop off your legs and beat you to death with them. The dragon can cowers before you, looking left and right. He opens his jaws, and you think he's about to yell for help. I interrupt his yell by shoving my axe into the cage, pinning his head to the bars without hurting him. Then I say the following. This is going to be good. Here's what's up. I'm going to carve the skin from your bones. Then I'm going to turn your skin into a little leather handbag that I'll shove your skinless body into so I can carry it around with me wherever I go. That way, the next time some asshat refuses to give me a key I want, I can pull your body out and show them what happens. How does that sound? Uh, wow. That was nuts. I'm going to give you a plus 10 bonus to charisma. Go ahead and roll. 
A small pool of urine collects under the elderly dragonkin as, hands trembling, it hands you the keys. Then it dies of fear. Awesome. Yeah, go team. Why don't you start unlocking the prisoners? I'm on it. As you free them, the prisoners run away from you in fear. What's next? It's tent time. Wait, have you forgotten the training camp? There's potential loot there. Hmm. Na gut, komm. I live for loot. Let me pick again. Where do you wish to go? Loot sounds good. Let's go to the training ground. Sweet. Upon arriving at the training ground, you are spotted by a heavy set orc who immediately shouts and points. There are a dozen raiders on the training field, all of whom raise their weapons and charge. Okay. So what do we do? I cast Urgle's Acid Blast. Um, overkill? Bam! You conjure up a wave of acid that washes over the charging orcs. Every raider suddenly starts screaming and writhing in pain. There's a sweet and sour kind of smell as the flesh melts off their bones like warm candle wax. Holy shit. You see why I haven't really needed a partner? The heavy set orc sergeant still remains. He runs at you swinging a massive warhammer. All yours. Hmm. Okay, let's end this. Fatal cleave. You swing your great axe downward with both hands. The orc blinks, then splits open like a hot dog bun. Fuck yeah! I'm awesome at this game! It's going well. What about the loot? Well, as the training ground is now a roiling pit of acid, it's unlikely any loot survived. Dang. Don't worry, Alamon guy. We all make mistakes. Elamon nods. Calamastia, the elf barbarian, is most wise and forgiving. What's next? It's tent time. You enter the tent to find Durgaron, warlord of the raiders of the Black Well, sitting comfortably at his throne. He's a huge red-eyed minotaur, swathed in a fine black cloak gripping a two-handed sword that's easily six feet long. His laughter bellows. Wah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Your lands and people are already mine. Your deeds here mean nothing. Your kingdom was weak. You are weak. What an asshole. I got this. I cast Zael's cataclysmic cone of fire. The fire fizzles out on contact. Durgeron laughs again holding up his right arm to show off his bracer of fire immunity. Shit. All of my battle spells are fire-based. Except for, you know, Acid Blast, which someone used unnecessarily to show off for Chloe. Calamastia? What'll it be? Mmm... Vernichtungsschlag, Wutsturm. Machen wir erstmal Wutsturm. What's Wrathful Rush? It's like a shoulder slam, an angry, angry shoulder slam. Okay, I do that. You scream with wrathful rage, then charge. Durgeron is caught off guard, and he fails to dodge. You slam your shoulder into him, knocking him back and doing some damage. Hell yeah. Next. I want to punch that stupid man cow in the dick. Like, right in the dick? Right in the dick. You miss. Durgeron burst out laughing as you stumble past him. Asshole. He <laughs> gores you in the side with a horn. Eight damage. Ouch. What do you do next? <gasps> oh, holy shit. Uh, annihilation strike. That sounds boss as fuck. One? That's bad, right? Not for me. As you take your first step, 
You trip on a rock, collapsing onto the ground in a clangy jumble of metal. Your axe swings wildly to the side. Mikey, roll a reflex save. Oh no, three. Your axe strikes Elamon's leg. Um, legs, plural, severing both feet at the ankles. I am so sorry. Durgeron moves toward the crippled Elmon. Oh, shit! I told you this was my best boss. You didn't tell me my character might die. Durgeron approaches, stomping his bloody hooves. Stomp, stomp, stomp. This is all my fault. Sort of. What should I do? I jump in front of Elamon. Wow. Thanks, Chloe. I mean, thanks, Calamastia. Okay. Durgeron has now turned his attention toward you. Bring it. He charges, thrusting madly with his great sword. Shit! Oh, no. Your attempt to dodge his thrust fails. Durgeron laughs as he impales you on his blade, lifting you high into the air. Seriously? I can't do anything with that stupid bracer. I'm sorry, Chloe. Hey, I chopped your feet off. And we're even. You feel your strength draining away as Durgeron lifts you higher into the air. It hurts like hell. What do you do? I bring my axe down onto his arm. The one with the fire bracer thingy. Oh, brilliant. You'll have to roll high to hit. You're almost dead. 20! Fuck yes! You bring your axe down in a wicked chop, severing his arm completely. His bracer of fire immunity clangs to the ground. I cast Gignomi's Fire Strike of Flame! Oh, snap! Lying on the ground. You conjure a flaming spear, which flies from your hands to spear Durgeron in the chest, incinerating him completely from the inside out. Damn, Elamon. Durgeron is defeated, but your wounds were too great. I'm afraid Calamastia is dead. I actually feel sad right now. Better to have died a hero than live as a coward. That was fun. Check out what I drew. Mikey's got serious drawing skills. <coughs> nah, yeah. <coughs> Glad you enjoyed it, Chloe. <coughs> yeah. I'll adventure with you anytime. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for the game, nerds. DVD, check. Next stop, chemistry class. Joy. Okay, Leute. Und ich sage, tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal.